Hey guys, Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, and we're going to be doing a video on lacto-fermentation. Now, I, it's the talk of the town, you've all heard about it, and what you're going to need is uh, some fresh vegetables from your garden. I just had an amazing harvest. We got some cukes, peppers, hot peppers, all different types of squash. You're going to need some distilled water right here. And you're going to need some salt in the form of sea salt. And you're also going to need uh, a measure. So for every three cups of distilled or reverse osmosis water, you're going to put at least two tablespoons of sea salt for three cups. I like to use one and a half sea salt and then some Himalayan salt up to you. You can even add some spice at this point. So I'm going to just put some pickling spice in here. And this is our brine. This is the brine we're going to be using. Three cups to two tablespoons of salt. Sea salt, not iodize. It's got to be sea salt. And you want to mix this up. So here we have a pre-mixed brine. And I'm going to show you how to make a, a, a coleslaw real quick. So I took a cabbage and I chopped it up and I salted it. And you're going to want to let this sit for an hour and uh, get some of the water out. And then you do this a few times and then you're ready to go. So this is almost ready to go. But before we do that, I want to show you some of these um, nicer jars I already did. Uh, this is some uh, Italian heirloom uh, summer squash and some cucumbers and some hot peppers. And this is as well the same. So real quick, we're going to take a patty pan squash, which is a summer squash, and you want to wash your uh, veggies really well. And then I'm going to make these into snack sticks. So this is going to be pickled or lacto-fermented summer squash snack, snack sticks. So it's real easy. Wait till you see how quick this goes. So I'm going to First, I'm going to add some spices. I have some dill from the greenhouse. I'm going to put a sprig of uh, purple basil. And then I'm just going to lean this over and I'm going to start putting these spears in sideways with a little angle. The reason I'm doing that is so that I get maximum uh, vegetable in here to lacto ferment. Okay, so that was the first one that we're in. So I'm going to take this cuke. And we're going to spear this up. And we'll just go ahead and put that in here. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? It's not hard. Okay, so these spears are in here. What you want to, what you want to do is leave about, uh, is the whole upper rim. You want to leave that for, uh, so I'm going to put some, uh, this pepper in here. I'm going to put this hot pepper in here and we're just going to cut this right down the middle here and leave um, some of those seeds in there. It's up to you. It's up to you what you do. It's your lacto fermentation. Some people say put a, uh, some cabbage in there. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to put a little bit more basil, some more herbs. Maybe I'll put some uh, pickling spice in here. And then we come to our brine and we fill it. You want to leave about three quarters of an inch at the top for air. And you're also going to want to source some plastic caps. And then you're going to put this, there it is, done. All you got to do is keep this at 70 degrees in the dark for about a week. It takes one week to lacto ferment and then it's done. And use these plastic caps because every day you want to visit and just quick burp it. <clears throat> Or it may explode. So just burp it like that. Don't completely open it. You're going to get bacteria in there. Just a quick burp. Now, they do make these fancy caps, which you can get at a homebrew store. And then you can just customize your plastic cap with a grommet. Just like that. And then you fill this. This is for making wine or other types of fermentation. You just fill this with a little liquid, and it burps for itself. It's up to you how you want to do it. But after one week, you can come and taste it. Taste the Taste them after four days, taste them after six days until they're as tangy as you want them. Um, 
Okay, let's put some cabbage in here, and then you're good to go. Then you have lacto-fermented vegetables. So after seven days, after it tastes good, seal it tight, put it in the fridge, will last all winter. It will last all winter. So if you're not up into canning and boiling and all that, you can lacto-ferment. So real quick, we're gonna do a quick slaw. I have some lightly salted cabbage that I'm gonna shove into a mason jar that has some brine and pickling spice in it. So a lot of times I just like to put this up here. Put the mason jar in the container. I got a little bonus squash in here. And I might even put a little bit of this basil to have some pickled uh, basil slaw. You can even add a little hot peps. Got some organic hot peps. It's up to you. Uh, be, go crazy. Be creative. You're pickling. This lacto-fermentation uh, utilizes the genus Lactobacillus. There's other types of species, but the Lactobacillus is naturally occurring. And again, uh, go with the plastic cap. The metal cap will react with the lactic acid that you're creating and may rust, but the plastic won't. So there's another amazing lacto-fermented cabbage slaw. This is super diamond slaw. You can make it too. Just a little bit of pickle spice, a little bit of hot, and a little bit of brine. And in a week, we're gonna open this with you and eat it, and it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be healthful, it's gonna be delicious, and it's because you made it yourself. It's Ayurvedic, um, and that's a boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Food is healthy if you grow it yourself and delicious. When you lacto-ferment, you can increase your gut bacteria, which increases your health, makes you healthier. You don't ever need to go to the doctor because your body is your own doctor. It's your own pharmacy. You make your own medicine by growing your own food and lacto-fermenting. Boom, do it.